Hello and welcome to VizGen's Mouse Brain Colab Notebook tutorial video. So this no this video will walk you through how to use the notebook, how to explore it, and how to run the notebook on the cloud using uh, our Google Cloud uh, platform. So this notebook demonstrates how we can explore and analyze a publicly available data set from VizGen uh, of the Mouse Brain receptor map. So. Um, this notebook has uh, several sections which can be seen uh, using the table of contents. If you click on the left here, you can bring up all the different sections of the notebook. Uh, so at a very high level, we have two sections. Uh, the first is uh, image and spatial data exploration, and the second is single cell and spatial analysis. So um, first we'll, we'll walk through how to actually view the outputs of the notebook and explore the interactive visuals, and then secondly we'll, we'll walk through how to actually execute the notebook. So, um, so section one begins with by downloading an image of the um, DAPI stain across our entire mouse brain. So here that we're able to visualize individual nuclei across um, our entire tissue and get an idea of the number of cells we're able to measure within a single MRFish run. So next we load transcriptomic data and we select a subset of genes of interest based on the most highly expressing genes. So here we select three genes and we um, visualize interactively visualize their location within the tr within the entire tissue using an, an interactive visual we built using DECGL and Observable HQ. So um, this interactive visual shows over 2 million individual transcripts from three genes of interest. So we can zoom in to see the actual location of these transcripts in, in incredible detail within the tissue and get an idea of their um, complex uh, spatial um, localization and uh, interrelationships. Um, you can mouse over to see the gene name. You can click to highlight a particular gene of interest um, a, or a single gene from your list of uh, gene of interest. You can also use the mouse over uh, this, um, sorry, this drop down menu to select a gene of interest. And then we can go back. Um, and then you can also adjust transcript size to, to help you to see the patterns better in your data. Um, our next visual is a single field of view visual where we load um, uh, data from a single field of view from our experiment. So here, we're visualizing, again, DAPI as a background image, um, uh, cell outlines in red, and uh, individual transcripts as points. So we can mouse over a transcript to see the transcript identity, and um, we can also switch to a 3D view to be able to see um, three-dimensional data from our Z-stacks from, from a single field of view to give you an idea of the compli complex um, three-dimensional nature of our, our MRFish data. So the next section, uh, single cell and spatial analysis section, um, we, we analyze our single cell gene expression data um, utilizing a, uh, the popular open source um, single cell analysis toolkit, um, Scampi, and we perform data preprocessing, um, unbiased clustering, uh, we identify clusters using leading clustering, and then we assess uh, tentative cell type labels using a reference data, data set. And um, are not, we assemble our results into another interactive visual uh, that we'll discuss down here. So all the code that actually um, does all of these steps is um, for conciseness being hidden, but you can click this button to see the code uh, at any point within the notebook. And then here, uh, when you scroll down, you see this um, interactive dashboard view that we built again using uh, DECGL on the left and um, the open source uh, interactive heat map tool uh, Cluster Grammar 2 on the right. So this view allows us to see um, spatial data um, on our left and then um, high dimensional gene expression data on our right and we'll demonstrate how these views can, can complement each other. So on the left you can every um, dot is an individual cell and it's being colored by its leading cluster. So you can zoom in and see exactly how cells from the same cluster are, are, um, are spatially located with respect to one another. You can also um, click the UMAP button to visualize the cell positions within the dimensionality reduced um, UMAP space. So here we're, um, this is a, a popular technique to visualize um, high dimensional um, gene expression data for single cell data uh, or otherwise. And so we can mouse over to see the identity of the cluster, click it to see exactly where the cluster is localized within our dimensionality reduced space and then animate back to spatial to get an idea of how, like the, the very interesting relationship between the dimensionally reduced spatial localization and the actual physical localization of, of a particular cluster of cells within the physical tissue. 
which of course you can only obtain based on single cell transcriptomics um, techniques. So you can, aside from selecting clusters, you can also use this drop down menu to click any gene that you're interested in and to see where the, that gene is expressed across the tissue. Um, but picking from a drop down menu is a little difficult because you don't really understand how those genes are related to one another. So this is where we bring in our interactive heat map so you can see these, the, um, this heat map is showing you your leading clusters as columns and your, the, our, um, our 483 genes as rows. So you can click individual columns to highlight the um, where that cluster of cells is, but then you can also click the any row to see where any particular gene is located. So if you click genes that are clustered near one another, you're going to probably see similar spatial localization within the um, within the tissue. And um, and we'll go ahead and down here. We walk through um, a couple clusters that are that are particularly interesting, and we'll quickly walk through those now. So um, so we'll start off with cluster 22 um, oops, here, uh, which is um, based on gene expression, has been uh, predicted to be uh, ependymal cells, which are um, a subtype of a glial cell. So if we don't go and double click on cluster 22, we can reorder the genes uh, that are highly expressed in this cluster. And we can see that um, within this, um, Within this cluster, we're seeing several genes that we would expect based on this um, this cell type, such as um, MLC1, um, AQP4, SCL25A18, and uh, GFAP, which are all uh, glial markers. And you can see, to varying degrees, these cell these sorry these genes are are, are demonstrating um, gene expression according to the the, the spatial localization of cl of uh, cluster 22. So. Also, this is where we would expect this cluster to be expressed in the, the brain ventricles, so this agrees with our prior knowledge. And then we can also investigate other highly expressed genes like CXCR4, and you see that these some of these highly expressing genes share like very strikingly similar spatial localization to the, their sort of parent cluster. Um, and then cluster 24 is another cluster of interest that is, um, in, in consists of um, inhibitory um, interneurons. And then we can see among the highly expressed genes here, also agreeing with our prior knowledge, we see um, GAD1 and uh, SLC32A1, which are involved in um, GABA production and uh, packaging, respectively. And we can see that they're, they're also highly expressed within the, the region of this cluster 24. Um, so this agrees with our, our uh, expectations for what this cell type would be expressing. And then again, we're able to identify. So um, among the inhibitory uh, neuron clusters that we see in our in our leading clusters, this particular cluster is is um, you know distinguished based on the expression of like particular genes like um, the receptor CCKAR, and also distinguished by its its very um, distinct spatial localization within the brain. So there's a a lot to ex explore in our data and. Um, the examples we've shown are, are actually just using the the um, pre-calculated outputs from the notebook, but this is a um, a notebook that can actually be executed. You're uh, you're welcome to explore. Users are welcome to explore the the parameters of the notebook, and uh, and 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 try changing things and seeing how how the results change. Um, so the two different sections of the notebook can be run independently. Uh, although both of them require the running the um, an, a, a initialization step here. So we'll quickly demonstrate how that works. So um, if you go to this require initialization step, execute, you'll be brought up with a, um, it will first connect the notebook to on the cloud to the actual execution environment. And it will run these um, the code within here and then it brings you to this this link that you have to follow. So you click this link and it will authorize Google to um, have access to its cloud storage. So you copy this, this value over and paste the verification code in. And then after you've, um, you've finished with that required authentication step, then you have access to our data and you can run all the, cell, all the cells in the notebook. And one way to do that is by clicking runtime and run all, and it will just execute the entire notebook. And uh, because of the large data that we're downloading, um, it can take about 40 or so minutes to run the whole notebook, although you can run the two different sections separately if you're interested. And we would like to um, thank you for your attention and hope you enjoy exploring 
our uh, Murfish data on the cloud using Google Colab.